was told, I, I think the program says this is looking to the future or something, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, so let me, let me just first acknowledge uh, uh, my wife, Ann, who is back here. Please give her a big hand. She's... <laughs> I thank Pete very much for being here and uh, for all the years of working uh, together with Pete and uh, all his public service. Let's give Pete a big hand. <laughs> and Sam, thank you very much for your, uh, your help with this tonight. And your, uh, we're proud to have you a citizen in Mexico. So. <laughs> And also, Tony and Pat, thank you very much for being willing to come in and uh, participate in this. And, and thanks uh, to New Mexico First. I think New Mexico First is uh, turned into a very uh, important organization in our state. And this is one example of uh, the kinds of uh, efforts they make, which I, I think are exemplary. Uh, let me just talk about three large transitions that I do think are occurring, whether we like it or not. And, and I think. Uh, uh, we need to recognize these transitions and do all we can to see to it that New Mexico participates in these and is at the leading edge of these transitions. And I will talk about three subjects, two of which we've already dealt with pretty much here, energy, education, and health care. And let me talk uh, a little about each just to say what I think these transitions are. In energy, I think uh, we do have changes, and, and the shale... Uh, oil and shale gas is a very major uh, change. But I think we are in the midst or the early stages, really, of a multi-year, multi-decade shift to a lower carbon intense, uh, intensity uh, economy. And I think that uh, that will continue. And uh, I think the whole world is engaged in this. And, and I think that the imperatives that are imposed on us because of the problem of global warming will continue to keep this uh, 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 as an issue that, and, and this transition occurring. In education, uh, we're witnessing a transition to higher standards. And I mentioned earlier in, in our comments here the, uh, the Common Core Standards, and I'll say a little more about that. And in health care, we're seeing the implementation of the Affordable Care Act. Now, this has been extremely controversial, but I think it's, uh, it holds great promise for New Mexico and presents a tremendous opportunity for our state, and let me say a couple of more words about that. First, on energy, uh, uh, I think we talked about this uh, to a substantial extent in the in the conversation here. But uh, I think we are, I think we should recognize that we are, our children and our grandchildren are going to live in a carbon constrained world, to a significant extent, uh, and they're going to live in a water constrained world to a significant extent. Uh, particularly uh, here in the Southwest. And, and we need to be at the forefront of helping develop the technologies that will, help, will lead uh, that transition. Uh, we, we've got a great history of contributing to the energy needs of the country in New Mexico, but there's an awful lot more that can be done, uh, and it needs to be a focus of our universities. It needs to be a focus of our... Uh, of our national laboratories. It has been to some significant extent, but it can be even a greater focus, and I hope that that's the case in the future. In education, I do think that this commitment by New Mexico to, to implement the Common Core Standards is a very major commitment. And uh, I don't think we have quite realized yet what the implications of that are. But uh, fr frankly, I, in my view, the implications of it are that we're going to have to do some very difficult things. We're going to have to look at how we can increase the number of hours of instruction for our, for our students. We're going to have to look at how we can increase the number of days in the school year. And we're going to have to look at how we can provide additional resources to our, uh, to our school districts so that they can actually get these implemented. Uh, the whole country, 45 of the states, have agreed to these common core standards. But frankly, I don't know how many of those states are, are, have, have really adopted an action plan to get from where we are today to what those standards will require. So I think that's something that is a major challenge and opportunity for us in New Mexico. On health care, uh, again, I, I congratulate 
the governor and the legislature of New Mexico for go going ahead with New Mexico's uh, decision to to implement the Affordable Care Act. Uh, that's to me, it's uh, it's a no-brainer. But I understand there there's a lot of controversy about it, and uh, we have agreed to go ahead with that. We've agreed. The governor's agreed to go ahead with the expansion of Medicaid, as has, as has the legislature, and, and agreed to setting up the insurance exchange so that we can get the subsidies uh, so that more people can get covered. We have over 400,000 people in New Mexico without any health care coverage today. Uh, the Affordable Care Act gives us the opportunity uh, to cover at least 90 percent of those folks, and we should do that. Uh, we should follow through uh, aggressively to do it. The federal funds coming to the state, the estimate is that over the next eight years, we will see about $6.5 billion of additional Medicaid money coming from the federal government to New Mexico because of the expansion of Medicaid, which we've decided to do. That is a very good thing, and that allows us to strengthen our health care delivery system in ways that we've never been able to before. And in addition to that, there's another two to three billion dollars that should come to the state for use in the insurance exchanges. So all of that is, is good, and, and I think it provides an opportunity for us not only to improve the health care system, but to create jobs. We're always talking about job creation. When you, when you look at where are the jobs going to be, what sectors of the economy are the jobs going to be created in, one of the great opportunities over the next five to, to ten years in New Mexico is in the health care sector uh, as we provide additional health care uh, to a lot of our citizens who have not had that health care in the past. Uh, we need to train the people to do that. We don't want to import uh, more folks from outside the country uh, to, to be health care workers. Uh, we need to be sure that we're training them as quickly as we can in New Mexico to fill those needs. Again, it's a great opportunity for us to strengthen our economy as well as to strengthen the health care delivery system. So in each of these areas, in energy, and in education, and in health care, I think there's a great opportunity for the state. Uh, I'm optimistic that uh, we can meet that challenge <clears throat> in each area. I hope very much we do. Uh, we need New Mexico to seize the opportunity that it has in each of these areas and to, and to ensure that as these transitions occur that I've described, uh, New Mexico is seen nationally and worldwide as being on the leading edge of these transitions. So, so that's my, uh, uh, not my final words, but at least some words. <laughs> and uh, again, I thank New Mexico first for inviting me. It's, uh, it's great to be here and great to see a lot of old friends. And congratulations to all of you who are actively involved with New Mexico first for all you do to, to help move this state forward. Thank you again. Don't leave, don't leave.